Appreciate that. Okay, cool. So zone assertion method from the AC crease to the axillary crease, we want to make sure we go in the middle because um, in the middle, at about two centimeters up is going to be your green zone, the most optimal position and placement for the insertion site uh, because of range of motion and um, disruption of dressing and also decreasing catheter, catheter pistoning. This is the red zone. This is the last resort. And down here is going to be, or up here is going to be your yellow zone. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start from the green zone. And I'm just going to put this off for a second. Sorry. And we are going to start from there to the head of the shoulder, to the clavicular notch. Luckily, this patient has prominent one, two, three. So we're looking at about 46. Let's double check. Probably a little, sh I'm probably going to end up cutting that shorter. But all the way to the right side, right clavicular notch, which is right here. And one, two, three, yeah, 46. We're going to go 46. So we're going to go around there. And I'm going to show you guys the, uh, the needle tracking method. Also numbing the patient all the way down so that he does not feel it. Uh, his veins are pretty shallow, so... There's not a lot of um, room for fascia band. I'm going to double check to see if there is. And we're going to make sure we numb him up so good he can't feel too much of what's going on. And chlorhexidine, you want to go back and forth to the little crosshatch technique. Want to give time for the chemicals longer exposure to kill whatever is growing. Okay, going for the second wipe. And you can move this, keep it out of your face. The, the drape, you can do whatever you want. Use. I see that. <clears throat> cool. Look at that. Beauty right there is where we're going to go. So it looks like he's got. Does he have a bacillus? I am surprised he does not have much of a bacillus. You do a lot of curls? Uh, yeah. Okay. Ah, cool. All right. So here you can see two two nerve bundles right here, left and right of the brachial vein. That's my brachial artery right there. So he's sandwiched in between two nerve bundles and then it looks like it hides underneath from there. So we'll enter at about here, but we'll start the insertion site at about here. Okay. Got a little bit of room. Good. All right. All right. Here we go. We're going to numb him up real quick so that I can get ready with, let that medication sink in. At about here. Are you ready? Mm hmm Okay. Here we go. Three, two. One stick. So this is the intradermal wheel where we're going to numb this locally. Any pain there? Nope. Good. No burning at all? Mm -mm. Okay, good. I'm going slow, taking my time. What about now? Nope. All right, going a little faster. Good. Can't feel much. That's great. Are you out in the sun? Have you been out in the sun a lot throughout in the last like 10, 15 years? Uh, like yeah, a decent amount. Beaches yeah. and okay. So there's a potential for thick skin and um, difficulty with the dilator. So I'm going to give him a nice big wheel. <clears throat> Usually a good long history of sun exposure thickens the skin, which is great, but thickens the skin. So We'll have to be mindful of that. Okay, so while that numbing medication is working, which takes about two to five minutes, maybe less, most people less. 
Now I'm going to show you guys how to do a skin prick test to make sure he doesn't feel it. Can you feel this? Um, tiny bit. Can you feel this? Nope. Awesome. Good deal. So we're going to get going. Okay. There's my needle point. And I'm going to stay very shallow, but subdermal, so that I can tap him right about there. So there'll be, there'll be some muscle involvement, but not too much. The muscles are big. Can you feel this? Nope. Good. What about this? Nope. Right. Can you feel this? Nope. Have you ever had acupuncture before? No. No. Okay. What about this? Nope. Can you feel this? Yep. You feel that? A little bit, tiny bit. So probably a fascia band, so what we're going to do is numb that area. There it is. Nice and hazy, I like you. I'm going to numb it. You guys see that venous regurgitation? That is cool. Something you don't see every day. That means he is very active. Okay, we're gonna to continue to advance. Can you feel this? Not really. Good. What about this? Nope. Nope, still no. Okay, so this is probably about where I'm going to enter. We're going to inject lidocaine so he doesn't feel so much when we add the dilator in. Can you feel that? Uh, not really. Good. Do a nice subdermal wheel. Okay. When you're doing this, make sure not to advance with the plunger, but advance with the syringe itself and in fact if you are uncomfortable with that you can do this remember the fluid and the medication is not going to inject if you don't inject it with the plunger it stays in place but i want to see that flashback really fast so can you feel this no nope. about this mm, tiny bit not really not a lot though okay and then, There's my needle. I'm going to continue to advance. I like to give it about a centimeter or two in in the vein. All right there. Good. All right. Now we're going to advance the guide wire. This is a little trick. I like to keep it right here in front of me so I can go in and out. Something else is holding it for me so I don't have to pull it with two hands. Freeze up my left hand for other stuff. Like this. Okay, there's my needle. Good. Okay. See that? It's the guide wire going in and nice and smooth. Beautiful. All right, so that's going in. I like to keep my hand on that guide wire so it doesn't get sucked in. Good practice. And 
And because we used gel, now I have to take the time to wipe it off because it will slick my hand when I'm trying to put in the, uh, the introducer and the dilator. Sorry, the dilator. Yeah. Kind of washed all that off. All right, let's see how thick his skin is today. Keep my hand on this guide wire here. Ooh, not bad. Nope, it's just me slipping. Yeah, look how thick that is. I'm gonna pull this back a little bit and keep an eye on. So keep that skin taut. Yeah, pretty thick. So I'm gonna dilate. He's good. He's got good, healthy skin. I'm pre-dilate the insertion site. Just make it go in a little bit more easily. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is pull it. So this is another way to not use a scalpel and not nick the skin, which nicking the skin will increase risk for infection because you're opening up a larger surface area. I'm gonna pull the skin taut this way. So you might feel some pressure from my fingers, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna press down and pull back and then pull the dilator back here to stretch that insertion side a little bit. And I'm keeping this uh, guide wire bent so it doesn't get sucked in either because he's got beautiful big veins. I'm gonna do that. Is it painful here? No. Just just like pressure where I'm pressing, right? No. With my fingers. Mm -hmm. That's it. There we go. I'm getting that little, little bit. And I like to keep the guide wire in place so I'm not accidentally pulling out the guide wire with the dilator. And I appreciate your patience, by the way. Put it in. I think we're out at about 10 minute mark. Now we're gonna insert and look how easy that goes in after the pre-dilation. No nicking. I haven't nicked in about a year and a half. And that was only because the patient had crab shell skin. We're going to hold that there while I get ready for the cut. I'm going to cut the catheter to length and we said 46 centimeters. Show the marker on my cut. That way people can more easily identify the length of the catheter. Cut up to 46. All right, I like to give it a little, another wet. That way, go nice and smooth. There it is. And I'm gonna give it a flush for the 3CG to be able to come in contact the saline and the stylet on the inside and of course we're going to recalibrate look at that beautiful wave cool nice p wave prominent p wave good okay so we're going to keep advancing so it looks like his body does like to push it out which is understandable he's athletic got more venous pressure than most he's not getting this for severe dehydration and there it is. Let's see. Can you give me a quick cough? <coughs> okay. There it is. Okay. Bingo. So it looks like it was curling up, and I just pulled it back just a little bit to uncurl it. And now it looks like it's uh, super exacerbated. With There it is. There's my inversion. So now I know I'm a little bit in the atrium, which I want to pull back to the SVC. Okay, so confirming. Yeah, that inversion at the P wave, so I'm going to pull back. Still inverted, pull back another. So I'm at about five centimeters now. 
So I'm pulled back at five centimeters, so we're gonna cut it to five. I'm gonna freeze that so I have it on record. Okay, which is fine because I'm gonna have about three in. Good. All right, so we're good. So we're pulling three for the secure cath. That way he can move around more freely. <clears throat> Just cleaning the blood. That's it. Oh, you're done? Almost. Oh, I thought you didn't start putting it in yet. Oh, you didn't even feel it. No, I didn't know you put it in that far. No. Uh... Look at that testimony, guys. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, good blood return, good flow, awesome. So, what we're gonna do is add the secure cath on now, and also reason why I put a big intradermal wheel so he won't feel this part either. You know, I like to make sure my patients feel nothing inside. <laughs> nice and dry, not slick from the gel. I'll pull this back. Actually, I'm going to redilate because the skin is elastic and has memory. So it'll go back to its original. So I'm gonna let that sit there and dilate. Any pain there? No. Yeah, good. Don't expect there to be. Okay. So while that skin is dilating, I'll give it a second or two. I'm gonna try to replace it almost like an Indiana Jones move here before it goes back to form. Sorry. Just pain from the pressure, right? That's yeah, it? Yeah, there's no pain. Okay, good. Here we go. Skin is, skin is very, very thick. Oh, she's not here. Get them all. Recess lights. Ah, perfect. Thank you very much. You're Do you have pain when there's too much light? Do I? Yeah. I just hit, don't like light. Oh, okay, gotcha. Not gotcha. the overhead lights. Gotcha, gotcha. No, no, okay. That's my fault. Oh, no, no, it's okay. It, it just got dark out of nowhere. Pain there? Nope. Good. Sorry. Try to make sure I'm subdermal. There we go. Nope. Wow, you really got thick skin. You used to, did you go to the beach a lot? I mean, decent amount, not like a ton ton. Okay, probably more than the rest of us. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pressing up against your chest. No, you're good. Okay, so I see the two feet, the wings underneath. We'll make sure it's subdermal. Not intradermal. Do you feel a pinch? No. Okay, good. I'll make sure the wings are in between the catheter. They are perfect. And I'm gonna refeed the catheter. Good. So you want you want the the zero mark to be at the end of the secure cath. And I'm gonna put it at about maybe let's say two. I'm gonna rotate a little bit so it's more comfortable for the patient to maneuver later. Like that. So I reset it at about here to point up so he can handle it easily. There we go. Okay, cool. Alright, let's put it on. 
We're gonna cap this together. Look at that, no sutures, no need for sutures. It's just an excessive amount of extra, oops, extra holes in the body that we don't need. So there we go. Now it's gonna be super easy to change his dressing. Is there any pain here? No. Okay. So, there it is. Feel that click. Now it's nice and closed. And this decreased risk for infection. So, good. Does it sting? No, not really. All right, good. I'm just waiting for this to dry. That kills whatever's growing there. Okay. Now we are going to apply the Massasol. This is also why I wipe very wide. In case I have to do something like this. All right, so first we're gonna do the skin prep and look how easy this is gonna to be to apply the skin prep. Look at that. That is it. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. So I'm gonna put this uh, gum mastic uh, adhesive on so that it prevents, it decreases likelihood of it coming out with the regular adhesive from the tape. So this will be good for you to keep, be able to keep running with. Okay, we only need one paint, one line paint of the Massasol. I forgot to do that, it didn't line up, so I'm gonna put it where it's gonna line up. I'm doing it a little bit wider because I wanna make sure I get all of the tape. We don't want too much or it's gonna be super, super tacky on the skin. There we go, that should be good. Boom. That is beautiful if I do say so myself. Perfect. We're like two minutes out from pulling it off of you. And you know what I forgot guys? I forgot this. I got too excited. Then we put the uh, gum mastic on there. So this slit needs to go in with the secure cath. And that's it. Boom. So let's see how well that gum mastic tackifies on here. God, that's beautiful. Look at that. Even with slight disruption, it still held on pretty well. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. So if this starts to come off earlier than seven days from when we're gonna change it, just give us a call. We'll come on and change it sooner. Cause the infection happens when the dressing is coming off. In a second. And of course, Dayton 